Demand for travel in New Zealand seems to be at an all-time high right now because of how well we seem to be doing. Uh, there's a lot of media about what a haven New Zealand is and people doing a lot of research about how much does it cost to come and travel here once all of this weird virus stuff is over. Over the years we've always had a lot of questions about how much does it cost to travel in New Zealand and we've never really answered it so now seems like a great time to sit down and share that because it seems to be coming up even more frequently in our inbox and in the comments. Kia ora if you're already a Kiwi, this probably isn't so relevant for you, you already know all of the costs but share anything that you think that I haven't covered in the comments below, I think that'll be helpful for anybody else that's looking. But essentially I'm going to break down costs into seven different categories and unlike the monthly wrap up uh, full living expense videos that I do quite regularly, which are linked below. Uh, this is going to be more about day-to-day -day costs. You got know the truth, the truth. So in our vlogs, we do try and share travel costs where and when we can. Um, and the 13 videos that I've counted, we've done across New Zealand. A lot of those costs we did share of just typical day-to-day -day items, but this is going to be more about these seven categories. If you get a little bit impatient and there is a category that you're more interested in than others, or you just want to skip me talking about this fluff, I've tried for the first time YouTube chapters, which is this cool new thing. So if you scrub along the playhead at the bottom of the screen here-ish, <laughs> it should give you the chapters and you can click straight ahead if you want to go straight to transport or dining out or whatever, you can pretty much do that from there. Activities. So if there's one thing that we absolutely love about New Zealand is, is that kind of country that uh, you don't always have to be spending money doing an activity. I know that kind of goes against the whole title of this video talking about cost, but with how beautiful our beaches are and how incredible the mountains and the ranges are in the south, if you've got wheels, you really don't need to be spending a huge amount on experiences. But New Zealand is so famous and it has such a good collection of crazy and wild and extreme activities that you can do along the way. We've recently got into taking a lot more walks. We've been, um, we did a really great one out in Piha, a beach out from Auckland. A really cool walk up Mount Monganui, which is one of our favorite spots in the North Island. Uh, we did the Hooker Valley walk in the South Island. Cornwall Park is really close to where we were staying during lockdown, which was another amazing place that is just so green and so beautiful. In terms of activities, places like Queenstown and uh, Rotorua and Auckland will be your sort of spots that everything is a little bit more expensive than the rest of the country. Something that New Zealand is very good at, you want to do this cool experience, great, so how about we add in some food or would you like to have a cruise with that or maybe we jump on a helicopter on the way back or include the kayak. So there's always, um, it really opens up the budget in a great way on a traveler's perspective that you can get in at the bottom line and just have a great experience or you can fully ball out and have like the dopest experience in a helicopter. A really great example of that was when we went to the Milford Sound um, with Southern Discoveries. They have a base model which is to get there and back but then you can add in well where are you going from, how long are you staying for, would you want the kayaking and, and all of those other little add-ons and so you're starting off at a price point of about $200 for a full day activity like that. Ours was a lot more, more towards 300 plus because we kind of, we, we did everything. If, I'll keep giving a few examples from Queenstown because that seems to be such a popular spot. The hot pools, the onsen hot pools there was $130 for one hour for two people and that also included alcohol and chocolate which is absolute bonus. Uh, the jet boating down there is so much fun, it is wild. That was $120 per person. To go up the gondola in Queenstown is $44. We're going to be doing the Hobbiton tour in Matamata on our big camper van trip that's coming up and that's going to be $89. Further north from Auckland is the Bay of Islands which we've talked about quite a bit and we did an awesome dolphin trip out there and that was $135 per person but that was the cream trip that was literally an entire day and we saw killer whales and dolphins and a beautiful beach and it was just an awesome day. For other experiences things like a bungee which New Zealand is both invented and is famous for is you're looking at $200 plus depending on where you are in the country and how big it is but to, to sort of put that into a little bit of a package full day experiences tend to be $150 plus mid-range or sort of a few hours or so you're looking at around $80 per person and then shorter stuff like little gondolas the small trip here um, they tend to be around that $50 price point so 
there really is this huge variety of options available and yeah literally anywhere in the country that you go if you search for the things to do you will find some kind of adventure or a four-wheeler on you know some some kind of extreme thing that you can do always something going on in new zealand and we we seriously love that a quick insertion here something that you should not overlook is travel insurance just want to quickly thank safety wing for making this video happen uh, but we've been talking about them for years and a lot of you guys have been using them as a great travel insurance that makes life very simple very clear very transparent and at only 37 dollars every four weeks it's a open-ended flexible model that really works for digital nomads or open-ended travel or expats or even short term because the pricing is so effective and very upfront about what you get it's almost a subscription you start and then every four weeks you pay they have some free inclusions for children they also cover time in your own country and Unlike some of the other travel providers for insurance, they also allow you to buy during your trip, which is super helpful if you maybe change plans or you want to just be more flexible about what you're doing. So there'll be a link in the description below if you would like to check Safety Wing out. Uh, if you purchase through that link, that of course tells them that we were the ones that helped you get there, which benefits us. So thank you very much for that. But um, yeah, on with more numbers. Accommodation is a really tricky one to try and package up into a box because it just doesn't really work like that but I can talk from some experience and I'll start in budget and work my way to kind of outrageous I suppose you could say. For us we're on this trip that we're about to take we're booking powered campsites around the country and they're $45 on average per night. If you're just in a tent or something like 10 to $20 will get you somewhere that you can stay at a campground. Hostels in a private room are about $80 or so. If you're a dorm sleeper, you're looking at like $30. If we start to jump up to Airbnbs, we booked a tiny home up north in a really cute little place called Matakana, and that was $105 per night in a token spot in the middle of the South Island, somewhere between Mount Cook and uh, Timaru. We saved some cash because we had a car by booking a place on a farm, and that was $115 a night and was all that we needed in terms of our road trip movements. If you jump up again to something quite Quite central in Queenstown we stayed at a place called my pad right in the center of town the location is absolutely key it's brand new the views are amazing and that was $140 per night Mount Monganui one of our other trips we stayed in a place that we actually stayed for a week and that was just shy of $1,300 in total but when there was a discount applied and with service fees and everything that worked out to 182 dollars per night the place was okay because it was below another house but the walking distance and uh, accessibility is what we paid for so there were cheaper options but we would have had to have driven everywhere further up north we booked a place and this is the first that caters for more than just two people that could have slept four and that was $180 per night. And I think that's a great price up there because we were heading up to Cape Ringanga, the tip of New Zealand. It's something a little bit more niche, a little bit more glam, which was for Stacey's birthday when we, we booked um, Redwood Farm on a glamping website. They were running a special as a lot of New Zealanders at the moment for $230. I think the typical rate is closer to 300, but this is like that perfect quaint getaway situation that we absolutely loved. We start balling out a little bit now. In Raglan, we, we went away on a little trip when we first got back to New Zealand with Stacey's family and we booked a place for six of us. So the cost was split into three. Stunning place. So we're just taking a little family road trip. Look at this place. Those are the bedrooms over there that all closes off. And that was $1,000 per night. And if you go one step further ahead, Millbrook is one of the most famous resorts. There's probably more expensive places in New Zealand, but that we have stayed in anyway. And we booked a three night weekend special that was $950-ish, but we also got credit that we could use at the restaurant and we put towards onsen hot pools. So it works out just over $300 per night. Great for the experience, but not really our preference because we preferred just be able to walk into town, like just walk and see everything and see the beauty instead of being isolated. But it shows you, you know, we've, we've literally gone from $30 to getting up to 400 if you don't get a special. So there's options for everything. Grocery costs in New Zealand are a bit of a mixed bag and often a bit of a surprise they definitely were for us after we kind of travel a year at a time and then when we're back home sometimes we're a little bit shocked at just how expensive some of our meats and our i mean we've got world famous dairy and meats and vegetables just how expensive they can be because we often see legitimately see new zealand products 
cheaper overseas. So the export is somehow cheaper than what we can get at the local supermarket. Just to throw out some random numbers, one liter of milk is, is generally around $2.90. A loaf of bread, $3.20. Vegetables expensive in the wrong season. Like at the moment, capsicums are $5 for one capsicum. I don't know why, it's just off season, I suppose. Free range chicken is about $22 a kilo. It can be a lot cheaper if it's not free range, more like 10 or 12 on sale. 10 pack of eggs is about $7, about five if you're not getting free range. Probably a shorter category and we'll add more once we start traveling in our camper van Aston so that, um, cause we'll be cooking a lot of meals in the camper van itself. Dining out in New Zealand is another place that I think that we really shine and again traveling really shows us just how good the the quality is in New Zealand from budget to premium it's just very consistent and impressive across the range versus other places that we've kind of experienced overseas. New Zealand doesn't necessarily have its own food per se but yeah we just seem to do a lot of meals very very well at an upper tier restaurant about $35 is an average cost for a main. Could pay up to 50 to 60 if you're looking at something seafood or like a really nice cut of steak or something. So that typically means for Stacey and I, we can go out and for about $100, we get some wine and, and a meal. Beers tend to be about $10, wines are more like 13. Maybe a less, less premium or mid range, we can go out and spend about $60 as a couple to go out. And cafes, you may be more around $40, depending on how many coffees you put back, which, wouldn't be us if we didn't explain how much coffees were, but you probably know that already from watching us drink copious amounts in the videos we make. Generally about $4.50 for a flat white, up to about $5, but flat white, that is the heaven. That is like the gold standards of a milky coffee is in New Zealand and for our Aussie friends, you'll probably agree. I think Oz is probably right there with us as well. We went to Wendy's the other night, shouldn't really reveal this online, but we did, and it was $32 for three burgers and only one of them was a combo. And we thought that was maybe a little bit on the pricey side. A bakery or something like that is kind of all over the country, really easy to grab. And for a couple of dollars, you can pick up the little mince pies and little bits and pieces. And for five or six dollars, you're looking at like a sandwich or something and a little bit more if you want a big hearty filled roll. In summer, there's quite a big uh, fish and chip culture, grab fish and chips, head down to the beach. And we went to one, the most famous one in New Zealand up north, and that was $31 for everything that we got, including a drink. And there was outrageous the comments because other people were commenting saying you know my chippy is only four dollars for this or for two dollars i get a bag more than i can eat of fish and chips so if something is has a lot of media attention it's going to be more expensive and that's exactly what we had again just shows though that that quality if you spend the money you get the quality in new zealand and it's nice to know that there's that like trust that you don't necessarily always have in other countries where you don't know if it should cost this much money and how good will it actually be but that return seems to be a good percentage risk in New Zealand. So as I mentioned at the start, having wheels is such a good way to get around New Zealand because it's the perfect, it literally is the perfect road trip country and there is so much amazing shit that you can see for free. But to share some costs of a couple of examples of rentals that we've had recently, in Queenstown on one occasion we booked um, a car for three days and we didn't opt for the insurance because we used our credit card as the insurance and that was $80 for three days. On another day we got full insurance and that was $235 for a similar amount of days but we also had a one-way delivery fee. Gas is definitely more expensive in the cities. There's the Auckland tax as it's said to be known. Uh, generally it's about $2 per litre uh, in Auckland, but outside of the big hubs and definitely some of the spots down south, it's more like a dollar seventy to a dollar eighty is probably more the average. Ubers tend to be pretty cheap in New Zealand and they're reliable as well. Um, kind of hard to put a price on that, but if you're heading from say Auckland Airport into town, it's about thirty-five or forty dollars. You can also catch a bus for seventeen to get you into the heart of the city. Local transport is reasonable in New Zealand in terms of buses. There's not great train transport across the country unless you're going on big scenic things but you can get buses between stops for a more touristy kind of experience and that gen generally is about 30 to 40 dollars um, unless you book really far in advance and then you can pick up like one or two dollar incredible deals if you're taking a ferry to places like Waiheke Island or other sort of spots like that you're looking at about 40 dollars Phone plans in New Zealand are very easy to come by. There's no tight restrictions about who or how you can get one as far as I know. 
Um, there is no roaming though, so you can't come to New Zealand and travel to Australia, for example. It doesn't quite work like that. It's just solely New Zealand only, unfortunately. For $20, you get 1.2.5, but 1.5 gigs, uh, as well as a couple of hundred local minutes. For about $40, you get more, more like four gigabytes. But yeah, it's really easy to get, and there's about two or three providers in New Zealand, and you, you got, kind of got flexibility between them. So we're pretty much at the end here, but there's some miscellaneous stuff that Stace said, has made note that she thinks that I should mention for random stuff. I pay $35 for my haircut. She pays 90 unless she's getting sort of uh, colored or, is that 90? I thought it was a lot more than that. Guys, you can back me up there. I thought she paid a lot more, but maybe that's an average. Uh, movie tickets are about $20 per person. Uh, we pay $14 per week for our 24 seven gym membership. Doctor's appointment at $50 if you're registered, whatever that is, and $90 if you're not. And I feel like that's about the other miscellaneous things. But yeah, ask in the comments below if there's anything that um, should have been on this list that I haven't quite mentioned. I'm just trying to talk fast now because I'm conscious. I can see how long this video is and it's, it's it's big, it's big. You're still here and I am I am quite surprised. <laughs> and that's a wrap. So yeah, New Zealand can be done on a budget. It's probably better off to spend a little bit more, but if you want to backpack, stay in hostels, um, party and spend your days hungover at the beach, that's a really probably cheap and effective way that you can do it without needing to blow out on expensive experiences. If you're coming for the views and the setting and the people and the relative, decent costs um, if you've got more of a budget and you can start to do the the bungees and the jet boats and um, you know the luxury accommodation and the viewpoints and you really want to do it that that is the best way in our opinion to do it and the best way is with either a car or a camper van or some kind of way to road trip and and see the centers but really get out and actually see the country because that's what New Zealand really is all about. The scenery is so green, the beaches are so beautiful, the mountains are stunning and for some of you it might be a decent way to come to reach New Zealand when we finally can travel so um, say do it, do it, potentially do it once and, and do it really well. Spend a lot of time and see a lot of the country and if you can't do that then you should try and find some New Zealand YouTubers maybe that make content showing what the country's like and what it's kind of like to to travel around. And I know a couple of them. <laughs> Shit, that's embarrassing, man.